exactly what we the flyer says it was. It's a story. And we just want you all to just come in, socialize, introduce yourselves to the veterans that are sitting next to you. You'll get a few announcements throughout the um, evening. I'll introduce you to our band a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and let them finish setting up. Um, we already opened the ceremony, so if any of you would like to go over and have something to drink, the bar is free. It's open, it's an open bar. Um, the bar, I mean, the uh, caterer has set out some refreshments, so help yourselves whenever you're ready. She's uh, one of our caterers here at the Riverdale Town Center. She is the chef of D and D catering. Works together for a few years now. How about Rumi? Yeah. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. That's a good friendship right there. Um, and she actually offered to, to donate food to this evening, so we're grateful for you. And she's also doing the, you If you register at the front desk and you receive the ticket, that's one of the raffle and gifts that Chef Bird has donated for this evening. So throughout the evening, we'll have a few gifts to give away. organizations throughout Clayton County on the south side on the east side so that we all can come together and make all of this available for you all and that you all know where we are so if you hear any of those brands or any of those programs go and check them out it's probably all of us together because we um, go and help each other out and make sure that we're there for one another the next um, program for us for Vet Week after tonight. Tonight is our opening reception. Um, on tomorrow, the veterans have been veterans who have been partners for us since the beginning, and they're my brothers and sisters. I love them all. Um, they'll be here instead of City Hall, which is their normal location that they do their um, program the second day of our Vet, vet Week programs. So instead of going to City Hall on tomorrow morning, They'll be here at the town center and they'll be in meeting room B in the back. So that's Veterans Helping Veterans program tomorrow morning. I believe they start at 10 o'clock, but I would say get here, you know, 9 o'clock. It's 11 at 11 o'clock. I don't have a flyer, so I'm sorry. But um, they start at 11, but you can get here early. We'll be open here at 9 a.m. So if you get here a little early and they haven't quite opened the doors, we'll welcome you. We also have, um, we'll have some courtesy coffee. I don't know if you all want that, but we will have that tomorrow morning as well. Um, they have a chef that's coming to teach you um, nutritional meals and just having a little fun with um, Zumba and whatever other workout programs they may have. Do we have any chamber members in the house? Clay County Chamber? Well, Clay County Chamber will be here November 8th, and they have a luncheon with all of the Clayton, Clayton County stakeholders. So you'll have your representatives, you'll have your governors, you'll have your mayors, you have your commissioners, and all of the stakeholders that will be here. And then they have a keynote speaker that comes and speak um, on third. Um, uh, about. It's, it's an experience that no one else can teach you. And um, as soon as we get the band situated, we'll come back. We're going to have the DJ play a little bit of music right now. Great. Um, the grant was $4,000, so we applied for the grant as the Georgia Parks, Parks and Recreation Grant. Um, it was awarded because we wanted to participate in the 
Let me get this right. Library of Congress, Folklore or Folk Life, I mean, um, National Archive. So what happens is, when you start the program, you're to interview veterans. And then you take all of those recordings and put them in sort of a time capsule situation. And we mail that to the Library of Congress. And then they then hold on to that. And 10, 20 years from now, from the day that we record, what they do is they go into the schools. They pull JROTC or they go to the military and they let the privacy for this area, this is for Clayton County, let them see 20 years later, 10 years later, these are your heroes right here in your community. And we have so many, we have, we actually have heroes in Clayton County. Everybody, you know, want us to look up north, go up north, go to east. We have our heroes right here in Clayton County. We have to see the airmen right here in this area. Yes. So, this is why I say to you all, just make sure that you, you, you never know who you're sitting next to. They have a lot of history. We want to record that history. We want to um, tape it, record it. This gentleman here will be taking interviews all night, so please. Go and, 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 and give him your um, military background so that we can get that into the National Archives. I'm really looking forward to This is the first time this year. We try to do this every year, but it's hard to get, it's hard to get veterans to talk about themselves, I think, is, is one thing. Once you ask them, you know, a little bit about, okay, tell me about yourself, and then give you, you know, their rank and so forth. That's not all you get. Like, you know, I live with one, so I know they're not going to tell you too much. But if you could just give us a little bit of background, tell us where you, you know, where you come from, where you're originally from, and then we'll just take that information and make sure we document it. And with your approval, we'll also have a waiver before we, you know, um, put all that together. But if you'd like to look at it and all that stuff, what is your name? What's up to everyone? Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you all here. Um, we are the Deltas, we are the East Point College Park alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and we are the Social Action Committee. So what we do is we engage our community and we embrace them and we educate them on things that are going on in the service area and around the service area. So what we are focusing on tonight is the 2020 Census. We want to make sure that you participate in the Census, that you are counted, you know why you are counted, that you are aware that the information that you provide during the census is confidential, uh, and that everyone that participates in the census, those numbers are counted, and you get money from the federal government that comes back to your local community. That's why it's important to be counted in the census. Also, beginning in March of 2020, you'll start receiving information from the federal government that'll tell you about what's going on in the census, the timing, and when it's going to happen and why it's going to happen. And so when you start receiving that information, I encourage you to participate in the census, stand up and be counted, be accounted for the things that are going on in your area so that your local community can get the resources and the dollars that come back to the local levels. Also, we have magnets tonight. Um, for your cars, your refrigerators, or what have you. The magnets are $5, and it is a be counted um, census magnet. Come on over and talk to us. Get a brochure about the census and learn a little bit about what's going on and why it's going on, and purchase a $5 magnet from us, please. That's all we ask of you. Thank you so much, and enjoy your evening. <laughs> I'm so excited. We're meeting some really new friends and people. We have so many people coming in, so... We, if it looks like we're stalling a little bit, we really are. I want everybody to take advantage <laughs> of the evening. We have some really good talent for you tonight. You just walk through the door. Mr. King Allen, it's right behind for me, sir. That's our entertainment for tonight. <laughs> to you, thank you for your service. I really appreciate you guys being here. You know, it's Friday. The traffic is... You don't have words for the traffic. <laughs> um, we're just going to 
deal with it. But I'm glad you guys are here. I'm glad you guys made it. We have some lovely food for you guys. We have a bunch of gifts to give out. So I hope you guys stick around. We're going to have some fun. Everybody relax. We all family here. Ain't no point in getting nervous. Get on down here. This is this floor and get boogie down. Yeah. It's time, all right? So our first gift. So if we call your number. I thought she just smashed that right I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm hyped up. Even though I don't get to win any of these okay. establishments. But if your number is called, I want you to run down here like you just won $100,000. Okay? A million dollars. Okay, okay. A million dollars.
video down on Army Air Force Navy everybody. Uh, Ms. Avis Jackson, uh, Mr. Gary Fambro, these are the two veterans here. Ms. Avis 
by herself put this together. I mean, just single-handedly, just going back and forth, back and forth. She and she pulled it all together. Um, and I really do want to say thank you. Just want to spotlight her and also spotlight Mr. Gary for setting up the, this event um, today. Um, one of the things that I do want to say: last year we had such a small number to come out. This year, I think we've quadrupled the amount of attendees here today. And I'm so excited for it. Next year, I told Ms. Avis, I'm like, oh, we're going to have to have this over in the gym. You know, we, we keep this going up. And I'm really happy for that. So you guys, please, just please be mindful. Um, when, we, when we're doing events, reach out to the towns. Or, you know, reach out to us. See what's going on. We, we're, we're engaging the community to the mayor and council. They provide the funds and the funding to have events like this. So we want to show up and show out to, to continue having that funding for events um, just like this. Um, and without further ado, that's it. Thank you guys and enjoy the rest of the evening. Now, Cassandra, you 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 know you're very unique here because you were the best service guard. No, I'm the best service in the world, the United States Army. The Army. Did you tell me you were with the Coast Guard? No, the United States Army. So, what years were you? From 1982 to 2012. So, uh, what what did you do? I first, I came in uh, for the first 12 years of my military career, I was a military police. And then after that, uh, I got out the first time. I got out the first time and uh, I went into the reserves and I became an 88 November, which is a traffic management coordinator. And from 1995 all the way to 2012, that's what I retired as. So what do you think about this event? I think this event was an awesome event. I'm sorry I have to leave soon because I'm going to support some other veterans. But uh, this was awesome. This was awesome. Now, are you going to come back to the women's event? Yes, I'll be here this on Tuesday. Great. I will be here. Yes, I will. Well, you tell all the other women veterans that you I know to be here because this event is really a growing event. I remember when it first started and it's like getting more and more support. And I think it's very important to uh, support the veterans. I'm a veteran myself. I see. And, uh, it, was, it, and it's, uh, it was a great experience. And I like to encourage other young people to do it because it, developed, it helps you develop this. It does. It does. And as a matter of fact, we've shared this on our Georgia Military Women page. Uh, we have a group it's called the Georgia Military Women, and we have shared that on our page. Everything that we have... Anything dealing with women veterans um, or veterans, period, we do uh, put it on our page. So what is our page? It's our Facebook page. It's a social group. Uh, no fundraising, none of that. But we just uh, share information. Well, let's just hope that that page is still around 20 years from now when they open up the capsule. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know that this, this interview is going to be put on the capsule. It's going to the Smithsonian and they're going to open it up in 30 years. Okay. Well, hopefully I'll be with you. You will. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Love and from uh, the incredible WIGO. And I'm here with uh, Dolores Hooker. And Dolores is, at this event, she's a little bit unique because she's, you're, pro you're probably the only uh, Coast Guard veteran. <laughs> so what what was it like being in the Coast Guard? It was different. I was just out of high school, didn't really have any specific goals, and I was supposed to go in the Air Force. The Air Force recruiter was not there. The Coast Guard recruiter offered me a seat. Next thing I know, I was in the Coast Guard. What was different about being in the Coast Guard? As, as, uh, as being in the Army, Navy, or the Marines? Because the Army, Navy, Marines all come under the Department of uh, Defense, and at that time the Coast Guard came under the Department of Treasury. There were very few African American females in the Coast Guard, um, so that in itself made me unique. And then, like I said, being out of high school with no particular direction, um, the Coast Guard had never even heard of it. 
It was a small branch of service, the smallest primary rescue, search and rescue and drug interdiction uh, are their uh, missions and it was right for me. Taught me discipline, respect, love for myself, love for others. It was the right thing for me. Now people are going to be seeing this video. It's got, this is going in a time capsule at the Smithsonian. And so they're going to put this in a capsule and they're going to open it up 20 years from now. And what would you have to say to young people if they saw this 20 years from now? If we still have a Coast Guard. <laughs> we will. <laughs> we will still have a Coast Guard. <laughs> and I would tell them that if they, are, if they have a love of people, a love of saving lives, a love of being a part of something unique and special, then they might want to think about the Coast Guard. All right, we want to thank you, and uh, we definitely want to thank you for participating uh, with the 2019 Vet Week. Now, are you coming to the women's uh, event that's going to be Absolutely. Absolutely. Great, wonderful. Thank you for having me. And, uh, they're going to uh, put whatever these interviews and whatever it is in a time capsule, and they're going to open it up in 20 years. And so we want to, like, uh, you know, give your experience of your military experience and what you do now and how's, you know, how's life, you got the hat on, so we know you're in Korea, okay? <laughs> now, uh, uh, give your name again. My name is Bernard Harris, Sr. And Bernard, you were in the uh, Army. I was in the Army, yes. Mm -hmm. And you were in the Korean War. During the Korean War conflict. Yeah. So what was that like? Well, I was uh, wasn't in battle. I was military police, mm. so my uh, job was a little bit different than the combat soldier. I more uh, were doing uh, out, uh, what what we would call uh, in military police the police work, uh, making sure that the soldiers uh, were, were protected when they came back from Korea. A lot of them came back, and we had to handle them uh, to minister to them so that they uh, get get rid of uh, the shell shock, uh, mm. the PTSD that they had. Back then, they didn't have PTSD. No, they didn't call it that. Yeah. <laughs> they said you shell shock. Yeah, okay. it was shell shock. Mm. Yeah, but uh, no what, was the, what was the what was the climate back then for uh, African American well, in the I, military? I went in just as they really were starting to integrate or segregate the uh, military. A lot of uh, duties I was on, I'd be the only Afro-American there, or at the time would be black there. They didn't have African-Americans back then. No, they weren't African, it was all black. <laughs> and um, so uh, I'd be in my outfit and I'd be on duty, doing duties. Some duties we couldn't do because they didn't want to integrate a mm. black and white soldier in a town, in a white town. Because mm. uh, they didn't want the, the two white soldiers to go into a white bar, but they couldn't, uh, but two, a black and a white couldn't go in a white bar. Mm. So uh, a lot of towns we had to uh, void or not put military police in because our county commander wasn't going to segregate his, his uh, unit. So, uh, what do you think is, uh, how, how has things changed uh, to this day, at this time? I think there's, uh, today there's uh, more opportunities for black in the military, more uh, promotions, more, uh, and a better career. The salary is much better. That's the major thing because uh, you get a good salary going into service now, but you didn't back there then. And, and uh, like you say, promotions weren't Promotions are uh, much easier uh, today for blacks than it was when I went in. What do you think about this event? This event, I think it's uh, very needful uh, to recognize the real trade. I, I do uh, honor Georgia the way they do uh, recognize the military as much as they do. Uh, more so than some of the states I've been in, 
doesn't make recognize the veterans. Mm, appreciation. Like, uh, appreciate what the uh, veterans are doing or what they have done. Uh, I'll give good that much credit. Right. Well, that's good. I, I feel the same way. Uh, I'm a veteran myself, mm. and um, I think that uh, I, I think it's very important now because I see a lot of younger people who um, they don't. It, they don't have a direction, and I think, the, and they get a bad, you know, like some people say, well, I don't want to go to the military because I might get killed. Yeah. Uh, you can get killed out here on 4th and Vine. <laughs> you don't have to go to the military. <laughs> you don't have to go to the military to get killed. I think so, I think it, so I think it's a good place to get discipline and respect. I think one of the worst, one of the things they've done when they stop the draft, because uh, our young people now are going more in, in, into the institution than you are in the service. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Well, we want to thank you. And um, definitely, you know, we appreciate you for coming to the event. And I appreciate you having me. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for your service. You're welcome. Thank you for your service. I'm here with uh, Ella Smith. And Ella, what branch of the service were you in? I was in the United States Army. The Army? What yes. did you do in the Army? Military police and also administrative specialists. Mm, amazing. Um, so, uh, what do you think about this event? I think this is fabulous. I love it when the communities actually acknowledge veterans and honor them for the service that they provide to our nation. And um, how long were you in the military? I was in a total of four years active duty. Mm -hmm. right. Where did you serve? I served at uh, Fort McClellan, Fort Jackson, Fort Hood, and also in the military district of Washington at various posts, Fort Minor, Fort Belvoir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, now, are you uh, are you uh, coming? Are you going to come to the women's event? Yes, yes, I'm going to attend the women's uh, any event here this week. All week. Yes, that I can. Yes. And do you live in this neighborhood? I live in Riverdale. Oh, yes, I do. So what do you think about the fact that uh, Riverdale is doing this uh, great event for the veterans? I feel like it's a unique event. Um, it is uh, very special and um, it's appreciated by myself and other veterans too. Now you know that this, that this um, interview yes, sir. is going to be put into a time capsule and in 20 years they're going to open it up. And what would you have to say to the folks who see this 20 years from now? Okay, what I'd like to say to those people is that um, folks like me, we're proud to serve the country. We're proud of the legacy that we're leaving behind for today and tomorrow. And I hope that anyone watching this video would also be proud to serve their country as well. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd like to have everyone introduce themselves. My, my name is Davis Jackson. My name is Willie Jackson. Retired, yeah. saw our first class in the States. So. Uh, now we have to speak a little louder so okay. we can get this because remember, it's gonna the sound might go away in twenty years. Might <laughs> <laughs> go down a little. Would like you like us to repeat? <laughs> no, no, okay. Now, Davis, tell us a little bit more about what this video is all about. So, um, in the beginning, we wrote it. Um, we applied for a grant with the Georgia Parks and Recreation Association and uh, we received a thousand dollars and part of the um, agreement was that we take video recordings of our veterans within the, the county, I'm sorry, and archive those videos so that 10, 20 years later at the um, that Congress, National Congress, Library of Congress, sorry, um, they would then take that video or those videos of all of those veterans and introduce them to the new generation of veterans 10, 20 years later. So this interview and all the others that, that you all are collecting today, are this is the first time we've ever crossed the finish line. So I think I said that to you, and I thank you so much. I appreciate that because we're, we documented it when we first started, Ms. Diane was there at our first one, um, but we, we, we never got to this point to where we actually have a videographer. So I'm excited about that today. We appreciate you, Mr. Fix-It Productions. And um, we're looking forward to recording or, or taking the recordings and actually packaging them and sending them to the National Library of Congress. 
Now, you were in the Army. Yes, sir. Uh, what years were you there? I served from um, um, 2000, I know it's correction, I'm sorry, 1990 to 2011. So 21 plus years. So ago. what was your experience? Uh, wow. what, what can you... <laughs> okay, I understand, yes, sir. Well, that's a big. That's a big. That, that covers a lot. Yeah, you're right. That covers a lot. Right. But well, I did. Um, well, my first idea was to just join the military for to go to college to get the college fund. But I ended up uh, twenty some years later, like made that. the career. Yes, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it again. But yeah, I got a chance to travel the world. Me and my my wife. I got to. Um, well, I wouldn't say an opportunity, but I deployed to two wars in Iraq twice. Uh, didn't get to go to Afghanistan because I retired right at the last, uh, right before we had to do that. But a uh, wonderful experience. Got to meet some genuine and honest and down home people that I keep in touch with today. When someone's opening this up, uh, well, when they're viewing this 20 years from now, what would you say to them? Wow. I would say this is real. This is real emotion. This is real love for my brothers and my, my, my friends in arms. And, uh, and I hope that they can use it as an example and go forward and do some of the same things that we did. Great. What do you think about this event? This event is awesome. Like I said, I had the opportunity to come to the first one when there was about five or six of us in there. Right? <laughs> so yeah, but we had a great time. We, you did. Know, yeah. we get to, got to meet some new people, shake some hands, and you know, just a, a good time. Well, that's great. Well, I, I, this has been a, a great experience for me. I, I woke up this morning and I told myself, I said, hey, you know, because uh, we had talked mm -hmm. about, about this, and I didn't get, I was going to call you and tell you that I was going to bring Mr. Fix-It. Yeah. But I didn't get a chance to because I got caught up in some other stuff. But I'm so glad we did. <laughs> I'm glad he introduced himself because I was on stage and we were able to announce then that you all were going to be doing this. So hopefully we'll get a couple more before you guys pack it up. Yeah, sure. Okay. You know, we're in some more people. Back. Absolutely. I was doing pluck them out. I definitely said And the back. food was great. Oh, was awesome. Great. <laughs> me and catering, thank you so much. Yes, they've been friends. We've uh, been doing this event together for seven years now. She said, before, like he said, it was just a couple of people. We would do it just for the few of us, but we're so excited. Can you give, can you give us a quick rundown mm -hmm. of the other events that are happening all week? Because this is a week long It is. Event. It is. We're blessed to have so many. Um, so, you, if, if you need um, legal service, we have our lawyers who are coming out on Monday. On Tuesday, we have the VA Medical Atlanta VA Medical Hospital, and they're here for the women veterans, specifically women. They wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, and then the next following week, we have AARP. We have our local Clayton County Senior Service um, Director who's coming on the 6th. Um, we also have Clayton County Chamber who's bringing out all the stakeholders. These are all of your state representatives, your um, your local mayor, commissioners, um, just all of you know the stakeholders for the county and we're so excited about that because we actually have a lot of um, uh, state representatives who actually support us and who support the veterans and I'm so proud of that because um, they were looking for something to do and so this year I, and I think with their help we, we've had you know the success we've had and then to close out will be um, Visions Outreach with VetFest and VetFest is like a huge brand I think he has a lot of things going on but we're gonna partner, he was just talking to my director a little while ago, and um, to do a health fair and some other things. So we're looking forward to doing a lot more things for the veterans. Great, wonderful. Well, I wanna thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. thank you, sure, thank you for your service. And thank you. <laughs> and thank both of you for your service, thank you. I'll let you introduce yourself. My name is Diane Hanna, and I'm an Army and an Air Force veteran. Um, I served in the military, started in 1980, and um, I got off of active duty in 89, and then I went on to the reserves and the National Guard. Well, you just a glutton for punishment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your activism with the veterans out here in Clayton County, because that's how I met, I think I met you when we were doing the one down at... About four um, years ago at, at, at the, Atlanta uh, Beach. Yeah, at the Beach. And yeah. 
You guys Atlantic forgot the international to, bar. You, you guys gave everybody an award but me. I never. We never gave you an award. Yeah, I finally got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you're right. Actually, I met you when you was um having something here. It, um, I oh, think yeah, it was a wind right. down Wednesday yeah, we night. At that particular time, I knew that we was giving out um, certificates for Vietnam veterans, and I came up to you and signed you up, and and um, you did some DJ and bring some of your friends, mm -hmm. and yeah. But I live in Clayton County. I um, recently just moved to Riverdale, but I've been living in Clayton County for about maybe 24 years. As a matter of fact, I raised my daughter here. She's a teacher. But I'm involved, you know, I just realized I've always been a veteran, but within the last seven or eight years, I really started getting active, dealing with veterans, making sure they get their benefits. Um, just um, every veteran I see, especially women veteran, I the first thing I ask you, you know, are you going to the VA? Are you getting your disability? You know, do you know that you qualify for it? And, uh, you know, I just love helping veterans. I just love veterans, period. You know, we... We serve our country. We had to leave our home and miss holidays and birthdays and funerals and everything, you know, to serve our country. And now we're back here. And because we're here, you know, we don't have to just, you know, just die out. You know, we can get involved. You know, we can make sure that our public officials know that we're here and alive and well. And we vote and, um, you know, we, take, we pay taxes. And we probably, the 1% the of us is probably the best citizens they have in all um, their jurisdiction. What are some of the main problems that you see women veterans encounter? Well, our, um, the main thing is our health care. And a lot of the women veterans, many of the women veterans, was probably also a spouse as well. So they don't recognize the fact that they are a veteran too, you know. If they only serve one term or just maybe a couple years before getting married to an, another veteran, they just forget about their veteran status and just become a civilian. And when we go to the VA hospital to um, receive health care, they treat us like a, a male veteran. And therefore, they don't know a female body is different from a male body. body. And because our bodies are different, they just give us the cookie cutter, just like the males, and so we miss a lot of stuff, you know. A lot of females just get upset, and they just decide either not to go back or go to a civilian doctor. Um, a lot of people, when they see me or see us as women veterans, they don't realize that we are. You know, they always want to know, well, when did your husband serve? You know, is your husband a veteran? But we are veterans as well. Um, but, I'm, you know, I'm just really happy that they're having this um, activities here in Riverdale. Um, just like I said, I just recently moved to Riverdale. I live about 50, 10 or 15 minutes away. And this is a great opportunity for the, um, the people in Clayton, Clayton County. You know, um, there was a, once a military base in Clayton County, so there's a lot of veterans here in this area, in Clayton County. Now, now, what is the primary purpose for veterans helping veterans again, and where and how can they get in touch with you? Veterans helping veterans. Um, they they started off their primary purpose, and they start is to make sure that veterans um, know that they qualify for VA benefits and also uh, qualify for a, a pension or a disability check. And our main purpose is to make sure that um, we. Let veterans know that we can help you get your 100%. Um, our purpose is to make sure that the veterans have a good standard of life because um, this organization was started with Vietnam veterans. And since I've been in the organization, I know that most Vietnam veterans would not live to be 75 years old. Most of them are going out here at 73. And because of that, we need to make sure that Vietnam as well as other veterans get their money as soon as possible to live the rest of their life as the best they can because of all their illness. Most of them, majority of them, like I said, would not live to be 75. And the ones that do live to be 75, there's a real low number. Most of them go out here between 71 and 73. So um, we are just um, happy that we are here to... Um, to um, do this for the veterans 
And um, and I'm really happy that you uh, is doing this. And just like I say, um, Ava said, I was one of the first ones that when she first got started, you know, I think I met about two or three other people. And uh, because of my travel, I, I miss all of this. So I'm excited for Bad Week, and I'm glad I'm here tonight. All right. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate it, and it's nice being your friend. You're welcome. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Thank you for your service, and thank you for what you do on the radio and for the community as well. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Hi, I'm Dr. Love uh, from WIGO, 1570 AM. I'm here with Monica Bailey, and Monica, you're a veteran. Yes, I am. And uh, what branch of the service were you in? United States Army. And how long were you in? I did 21 years and 28 days. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so what did you do? I was in logistics, and supply what? services, supply management, and supply uh, services. Now, uh, what was your experiences? I um, mean, where I traveled to. Yeah, where'd you travel to? What did oh, you do? What was, what was so life like? Life, for me, life was great. I had some really good assignments. Um, I started out at um, Port Dixon, Jersey. That's where I had my basic. I went to uh, Fort Lee for AIT, left there and went to Fort Hood, Texas. And left Fort Hood, Texas, and I went to Germany, spent three years in Germany. Came back to uh, Fort Bend in Georgia. Uh, from Fort Bend in Georgia, I went on recruiting duty up in Cleveland, Ohio. I left Cleveland and I went to Korea. And uh, I ended up in the um, Leadership Academy, teaching PLDC. And I left there and went to Fort Lee, Virginia, and I taught um, my job, which was uh, material management. I left there and I went back to Germany. And then I, <laughs> and then I ended up here in uh, Atlanta at Fort McPherson, where I was in contracting, and I ended up retiring from Fort McPherson after 21 years and 28 days. Well, that's great. So what do you do now? <laughs> right now, I'm in the insurance industry. I do life and health insurance. Now, okay. uh, when they open this uh, capsule up 20 years from now, what would you... Uh, say to folks 20 years from now let's move forward i would forward say just time. just live your best life be kind to people treat people the way you want to be treated and just love on people what do you think about this event oh i have enjoyed myself really i really enjoyed myself i love to dance and i got some dancing in so that's good and the music was great and the food was great right. so no and, and the collaborate <laughs> yes <laughs> all right thank you Monica. all right thank Appreciate you, you. I'm Dr. Love from WIGO, the incredible WIGO. And who do I have here with me? I'm uh, Vincent Cosby. Uh, I'm Vincent Cosby. I was uh, Army, served four years, nine months, and 21 days. Boy, you got it down to the science. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Edna Cosby. Um, I was Air Force. I did six years active duty, and then the rest of my time I did in the Air Force Reserves, and I did 22 and a half years. So what was your experiences? Mine, uh, I, uh, I did my basic at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Uh, then I left there, went to Virginia uh, for AIT. From there I was, uh, moved up to Boston, Fort Denton, Mass. And it was a little bit too cold, so I put myself on levy to go overseas. <laughs> I ended up overseas at uh, in Athens, Greece. Uh, Army didn't have a base over there, so we used the Air Force base, and that's how I met her. Oh, well, that's, that's how we met. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. And, and, and so um, what would you have to say to um, folks 20 years from now about your experiences and how it has affected your life? Well, it, uh, my experiences were, were great. Uh, like I say, that's why I met, met her. We've been uh, married now for 35 years in June next year. Well, congratulations. And, mm -hmm, and uh, we, have, we have two boys and expecting our first grandson. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it was a wonderful experience. It was the best times of our life. We didn't know it then, um, but it was the best time of our life being married in, in Greece. You know, for the time that we were, and and it set a stage. It set a stage for us for our lives. You know, because um, I went on to work for the federal government, and um, he uh, went on to work for Fulton County. So it kind of set a stage for us. You know, so what do you think of this event? I think it's uh, great. Um, this is my first time here. I heard about it. Uh, they had it last year, but this is good. The food was good. Entertainment's great, and. Uh, the atmosphere is good, and to see all these uh, veterans 
you know, coming together just to have a good time and sharing their experiences is great. So when the people open up this uh, capsule, I guess is what you call it, mm -hmm. 20 years from now, what would you say to them? I would say, you know, the, the military, it gives you uh, a stepping stone into life. You know, it, uh, you know, when you're young, if you don't have uh, a uh, specific direction, the military will guide you. You know, and that's what it, it done for me. I, I knew at a young age that uh, I didn't want to be stuck in a, in a certain place, and I felt the military would uh, take me to different places, which it did. Right. Could y'all repeat your names again? My name is Vincent Cosby. And my name is Edna Cosby. Okay, I want to thank y'all for y'all's service. And I tell you, it's, I, I think this is a great event, too. The food was great. I'd been on the rush all day, hadn't had anything to eat, and I uh, hey, got there and saw that line, and I couldn't, couldn't help myself. It was good. <laughs> it was really good. Open bar, too. Yeah, open bar, too. I know that's right. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your time. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank, thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Love, and I'm here with Cynthia King. Cynthia King. And Cynthia, what branch of service were you in? I was in the United States Air Force. In the Air Force? We got a... I'm in Army country, but I represent the Air Force. <laughs> well, that's good. What did you do? Well, I started out in logistics. I was air transportation, and then my last three years, I was a first sergeant. So I dealt with personnel issues, all kinds of personnel issues. You were a drill sergeant. A first sergeant. No, first sergeant. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> But so, so uh, it was a great experience? Yes, it was. And um, what did you gain most out of it? What I gained most from it was just life experiences. I mean, I was a military dependent with my dad being in, in the Army. Hmm. And so when I decided to join the military, I was going to do the Army. But he said that since I was his daughter, he would prefer me doing the Air Force because the Air Force is better on females than the Army was. So I followed his advice and joined the Air Force. Great. So uh, what, uh, what would you tell young people or old people or anybody uh, about being a member of the military? The military is a subculture of its own. They have camaraderie. They're there for each other. They have their six. And you don't find that in the civilian sector. I mean, I'm, I'm retired, and I didn't go back to work um, after my retirement. I would decide to stay at home and raise my children. But um, I just miss the camaraderie. They're there for each other, and it's just a great experience. So if, when, um, when people open this time capsule, it, this is very unique because we're doing this in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I see this on TV all the time. But what would, you, uh, what would you say to people? If you don't know what you want to do when you first come out of high school, give the military a chance because it will definitely open up doors for you and leads you to understand what you want out of life. And then if you don't do the full 20 and retire, you still leave with experiences that you can put into the civilian sector. All right, thank you. Thank and you. And thank you for your service. Thank you, and thank you for yours. Thank you. Started. I'm Dr. Love from WIGO, and I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm Warren Gregory, uh, 11, over 11 year uh, military vet. Uh, United States Army. Mm -hmm. What did you do in the Army? Uh, food service specialist. I was a food service specialist from day one all the way until I left. Mm -hmm. And what, what kind of experiences did you have? Where did you go? Uh, what did you see? What did you do? My uh, basic training was in Fort Dix, New Jersey. My AIT was in Fort Dix, New Jersey as well. They just marched me from one side <laughs> of the, 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 the uh, post to the other side of the yeah. post. And then uh, from there, uh, filled out your dream sheet, as they call it. Uh, I got Germany, spent three and a half years in Germany. What part of Germany were you in? Freeburg, Freeburg, Germany. Uh, made food out of the Elvis Presley Memorial Dining Facility. <laughs> and uh, uh, after that, we went, to, we went to war, went to Iraq, served in Desert Storm, Desert Shield. Uh, Got out of, uh, came back to the United States to uh, Fort Stewart. Uh, then got out of Fort Stewart, uh, went into the um, National Guard, then went back to war. 
So I served two terms uh, in, in Iraq. It served two terms in Iraq. Came home. Did yeah, what did it do? What do you do now? Uh, now I work for the state. I do maintenance for the state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but during, the, during your time, it was the all-volunteer army, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's still all-volunteer, right? right? That's why you had to go see <laughs> yeah. the war so many times. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wanted to go. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty patriotic. Uh, yeah. uh, and and uh, if, if I wasn't uh, going, if I wasn't with someone that was going, I would have asked to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. So, um, again, like, you know, we're looking at this as being something that's going to happen later, share your experiences. Uh, what would you say to folks? Uh, uh, the military has really, had really uh, broadened my mind. Uh, uh, it's, it really shows you that there's something out there and there's people out there bigger than your little area that you're in, your little state that you're in, or whatever. And uh, it, it really shows you a different cultural setting. It's one thing to hear about how a person lives in another country or state or something like that. But when you actually go there and you see it, it's mind-blowing, truly mind-blowing. Well, I want to thank you for your service. And thank, you thank you for your being, service. I want to thank you for being a brother. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Dr. Love here, and gentlemen, let me let me let you introduce yourself. Yes, good evening. My name is Lanell Lucas, and I served in the U.S. Army for three years in Hawaii. I was a petroleum supply specialist. I refueled helicopters at um, Wheeler Air Force Base, and I did three years and got out and had a great great service and a great tour of duty in Hawaii. And I also was um, took basic training at Fort Dix. And I also went to um, Fort Lee for AIT. So what do you do now? Now I'm retired. I'm retired from the federal government about 12 years. I was an accountant for about 20 years. And I thoroughly enjoyed retirement here in Atlanta. I've been here about eight years now. I'm mm-hmm. really from Brooklyn, New York. All right. What do you think about this event? This event was wonderful. I went to the one last year. I think they had uh, Lou Gossett last year. Right here. Mm-hmm. Wonderful event. I said, I wanted to come back again, and I thoroughly enjoyed it two years in a row, and I look forward to many more. Well, what, um, what, what, and like uh, I was asking everyone else, t- uh, 20 years from now, or 10 years from now, whatever, when they open up this, these interviews and people are looking at what would you like to say to them? Well, I'd like to say, you know, was, you know, consider a career in the military, at least get some training, get some the discipline, motivation. That's what I needed when I went in. And, um, what, what motivated you to go in? I think some just a chance to you know get a skill, see the world. I uh, wanted to go back to school. I was on the GI Bill. There's a lot of great benefits that a lot of veterans will take advantage of the GI Bill, and that's the one great reason that motivated me to go in. Let's hope they still have them 20 years ago. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. And my father, he served in World War II, so that was an okay. uh, influence too. Well. Uh, we want to thank you for your service, and we want to thank you for coming to this event. And uh, let's hope we have a great event again next year. Yes, the no next doubt. twenty years. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you. you for having me. All right. Yeah, good evening. Doctor Love here, and I'm here with Mose Ansley. Mose, what branch of service were you in? U.S. Army, sir. U.S. Army. Boy, I tell you, this is an Army camp up in here. <laughs> sure is. So, what did you do in the Army? I I, I was drafted in 1962. From California, I'm originally from Alabama. Alabama actually uh, drafted me, but I served with the Fourth uh, Division, the 12th and 8th Infantry. But most of the time, I was in service. I was in during the Vietnam era, even though I didn't go over. They found out that I was a musician, so I became a uh, entertainer with the Sixth uh, Army uh, Entertainment Division. Boy, what luck! I always wanted that to happen to me, but it didn't. <laughs> I got, I, yeah, I hear you. Um, but uh, what do you think of this event? I think it's a, it's a great event. I was here last year and will continue to come. And, uh, there's plenty of things going on. I'll be here tomorrow and there's a lot of things going on. Now, what event is tomorrow? Well, that, that's the, uh, used to be called the Black Veterans Helping Veterans. It's, it's Veterans Helping Veterans will be uh, sponsoring the event tomorrow. And what kind of, uh, Activities do they participate in? 
Uh, they have a, they have a lot of veterans, you know, as far as veterans uh, getting benefits, and they even have they even give a scholarship. They have the funds that they they raise money sometimes for students to help them. But they they it's a great group, and they do a lot of things for just veterans. Now they're general. located out here in uh, yes, Clay County, Riverdale. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Well, that's great. Uh, well, I want to thank you for your service. Well, thank you very and much. And what would you say to folks seeing this 20 years from now? This is amazing. Well, one of the things I would say, uh, when I was drafted in 1962, I was 24 years old, and I had work, already worked in defense for five years. When I got drafted, I continued that after I came off of active duty, and I ended up working uh, with uh, McDonald Douglas, I retired from there, which is now boring. And so I think one of the things that the military helped me is learn more about how, what we do and all the, people, all the military people that's involved and people who assist in helping our country. And so I, I retired working in aerospace electronics and so I continued, in my opinion, continue my service as I was in the military. So I would think that... So you learn skills in the military that you could utilize in civilian life. Yes, I did. And I finished my education also, um, got my college degree, and just a lot of things uh, that uh, the military taught me. I heard some of the people mention the uh, camaraderie. And uh, I had a lot of exposure. Growing up in Birmingham, Alabama, I had a lot of exposure to different cultures that I didn't get a chance to... Uh, be involved with when I was growing up. And over the years, I've tra done a lot of traveling around the world, and so much of what I've heard from other people, I just, I just think the military gives young men and young women a chance to experience things that they would never experience in their life. Hmm. Appreciate it. Appreciate you for your service. Thank you, And sir. thank you for and being here. Thank you here. for yours. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Love here, and I'm uh, back here backstage with uh, George Patterson. George, tell us a little bit about what's up. Okay, um, City of Riverdale for seven, eight years have been putting on a week of events for veterans. Um, they start off with the first thing, the dinner, then tomorrow you'll have a veteran helping veteran. They'll have a couple guest speakers speaking. Now you're part of that organization, right? Yes, yeah. I'm um, elected. Um, charge procurement officer. Uh, Bundy, they'll have a group of attorneys here to help look over your claims. Um, and then you can set up one-on-one -on -one sessions with them, but they will also do a workshop. Then Tuesday, you'll have things special catered to female veterans, the women veterans. Uh, Thursday, Wednesday, you'll have Clayton County uh, senior services will be doing something as far as health and fitness. On Thursday, you'll have AARP here. They're big sponsors of this event. And also, a AARP is doing an event tomorrow at in uh, Riverside Parkway. Two shows, PTSD event. Then Friday, you have the Chamber. They also have a luncheon for veterans. Then Saturday you have the breakfast. You have um, a veteran group that um, will do a breakfast for veterans. Now these events are all over. They're all here. They're all here. They're all here. Oh, okay. But there are also other events. Other venues are also hosting events. Um, City of Lovejoy, they do a dinner Thursday night. Um, the church in... Southwest Atlanta, they're doing an event Saturday morning that I'm one of the speakers. But then we also, January 11th is a big day also. Well, January 11th next 2020, we're having a symposium for veterans. First, it was geared to veterans only in Clayton County. Once I jumped on board and used some of my marketing skills, I'm recruiting veterans from all over. So far, we've recruited approximately 45 vendors. And then we also had breakout sessions. Now, uh, what branch of the military were you in? Army. I 
tell you, is, is there anybody who is not in the Army? Well, you know, reasons, <laughs> reasons a lot of us hear from the Army, because that were the first branch of the military, everything branched off of that. Oh, okay. Hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do in the Army? I was a 36 kilo. I was a field wireman. Um, climbing telephone poles, doing communication. Once I served three years, I got out, went to the National Guard for a year. I was an MP. So what would you, when they, like I say, when they open this thing up a thousand years from now, whatever, what would you have to say to people about your military experience? My military experience um, has taught me to work with others, you know, because everybody has different skills, different levels of expertise. So for me, it's easy for me to help others in need. We've been doing it since the beginning of time. A lot of people take advantage of it. A lot of people don't. Um, but it's about teamwork. Okay, George, I want to thank you for your service. And um, I think it's a great event. The food was great. The music was great. And the open bar was wonderful. So then, one thing I'm coming out, I'm looking for a little bit of detail. Y'all give me one time for the band now, man. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody, come on, come on. DJ.